Hi everyone! Welcome to Emsoon Yoga and Wellness. I'm Dr. Melissa and I'm really excited that you're here for part two of the beginner series. It's really important to learn how our bodies are moving and what muscles we feel activating or if one side's a little stiffer than the other side or doesn't quite move right. So that's the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway I want you to get out of these beginning gentle movements and learning how your body moves. Make sure you stay till the end because I have a little giveaway for you if you've got any aches and pains or stiffness going on. I'm going to link it down below. So go grab your mats and let's do this. Okay, so we're gonna get started and let's just lay on our backs. I wanna just tune into your breath and just notice what you feel when you lay down at first. And maybe your legs are bent, maybe they're out straight, maybe you have a pillow or a bolster underneath your knees if, you, if you'd like, but just getting in a comfortable position before we get started. And you're tapping in, you're, you're noticing your breath. When we tend to be stressed or if something's hurting, we'll brace and guard with our breathing. And then we use our neck muscles and shoulder muscles to help out with breathing. And that just makes any tension we have going on in our neck or our back a little bit more. So belly breathing is so important for a bunch of other reasons that we'll get into later. But Really try to help use that belly breath. So we're using our diaphragm. Inhale, our stomach goes out. Exhale, it relaxes down. Inhale, we push the stomach out. Exhale, relax it down. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, let it go. And sometimes it can be helpful just to put your hands on your stomach to make sure you feel that stomach going in and out as you're breathing. I also want you to check in and notice how your head feels against the mat, how in between your shoulder blades feel, the curve of your neck, the curve of your low back. Just tap into all those little things. And you're gonna remember what your body felt like when we first started and then how it feels at the end. Good, nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Good, one more nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. And then if the legs are bent, maybe we're gonna straighten them out. And then arms rest by your side. We're just gonna float the arms, lift those arms all the way up overhead. Nice breath in, reach through your fingertips and your toes. Nice big breath. Exhale, let it go. Get super heavy on the mat. One more time, we're gonna reach through our fingertips, stretch out through those toes. Nice big breath in, reach, 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 reach. Exhale, let it go and bring the hands back down by your side. And we're gonna slowly bring your right knee in towards your chest. You can grab behind the back of it or maybe grab the top of it, whatever feels most comfortable for you. You're keeping the shoulders relaxed and we're just gonna start to do some gentle circles with that right hip. And noticing how the hip feels. Is it sticky in one spot? Do you feel a nice stretch in your low back as you pull it in towards your chest? Nice gentle movements. Good, for three, two, last one. And then we're gonna switch, that left leg comes in, the right leg goes out, hands behind or on top, again, whatever feels best for you. And just tuning in how the left side feels compared to your right side. It's noticing those small little differences. Using your breath. Awesome. And then placing that left foot back down on the ground. 
Walk both feet in and we're gonna walk our feet out so they're about mat distance apart. And just gently lower them to the right. And then that left hand side. Noticing the pulling in the hips or maybe your low back. Checking in with everything. Use that breath. Good. Next time the knees go to the right, we're going to turn our head to the left. Just check in the low back. Inhale, bring it back up. The knees are going to go to the left. We're going to turn our head to the right. Staying with the breath, really pushing that stomach out. Chest and neck stay nice and relaxed. And bring everything back up towards center. And we're going to work on firing up our lower abdomen area. So it's not this tucking of the pelvis underneath. Just want you to think of like a gentle zipping up from that belly button. You want to gently imagine the two bones in the front of your pelvis. You're kind of pulling them together. But don't hold everything in the upper body nice and stiff. So you're just going to keep it nice and relaxed. Belly button pulls up and in. And then we're just going to start to tap one foot and then the other. Now, even if you're holding this in, I want to make sure you're breathing. You're like, oh, how do you want me to hold this and breathe? So it's just a gentle little contraction, pulling belly button down and up. Use the breath, gentle taps. Good. If this feels really good, you can stay with it. Or maybe you want to add on by gently alternating those taps. You don't want to feel any pulling in the low back, no pulling in your upper back, and really just use the breath and we're creating this heat down in that lower abdomen area. Use the breath. Awesome job. Five, four, three, two, Last one. Place those feet back down. Take a nice big breath in. Reach those arms all the way up overhead. Exhale, let it go. Get super heavy. Hands come back down by your side. We're going to do one more for the core. And I'm going to give you a couple options. So it's that same thing. Belly button pulls up and in. You can go right back to that marching if you still want to continue to practice that. It's all about getting that contraction down first and remembering to listen to your body. Or if you always want to add on, we're going to bring both knees in and we're going to do small little circles. And it should feel like a really nice massage on your low back as you're rotating from side to side. Let the shoulders stay relaxed. And every time those knees come in toward your chest, you lift up and in with that belly button. Good, small little circles. Awesome. Five, four, three, two, last one. And then we're gonna switch directions with those circles. Bring those knees in toward your chest, or maybe you're doing the marching, whatever feels comfortable for you at this moment. And know that what's right for you today might be completely different than yesterday or tomorrow. It's really tuning into our bodies and trying not to push through things. Three, two, one, slowly lower those legs back down. It's definitely a lesson I've learned. I kept always kept trying to push through and push through and once I finally started listening, my body was like, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna roll on to our left sides. Your head's gonna get nice and heavy. We're gonna bring those knees. Knees one stacked over the other and make sure the, the hips stay rolled forward. Sometimes what happens is our hips start to drop back, but you wanna make sure they stay rolled forward so we're gonna feel this more in our chest and our mid back. We're gonna take our hand and you're just gonna place your hand behind the back of your head. And it's just nice and comfortable resting there. We're not pulling it. And the elbows are kind of aligned with the elbow. With the hips rolled forward, on your next inhale, we're gonna take the arms, lift the arm all the way up. And then exhale, bring it back down. 
Inhale, lift the elbow, come up. Exhale, bring it back down and check in. Notice what you're feeling. Do you feel a stretch in the front of your chest, in your mid back? How far back are you able to go before that hip wants to start to roll? Okay, we're gonna do two more times. So this is great for getting mobility in the middle of our backs. This tends to be a pretty stiff area, especially if you have a job where you're sitting at your desk or we're on our devices or computers all the time. Last one. Really pull that right shoulder blade down and back. Awesome, lower all the way back down. From here, we're gonna roll onto our stomachs. Okay. And we're gonna come into a sphinx pose. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna bring your elbows by your side, palms are gonna face the ground and your head's just resting down on the ground. And before we do anything, you're gonna take that belly button, pull your belly button up towards your spine, press into your palms, pull yourself forward, and then just gently lift up. So the main thing is pulling forward, so you feel this like gentle traction, little distraction in your back, because we don't wanna feel any pinching. Imagine my fingers were in between your shoulder blades and you're just kind of opening through the front of your chest. And it doesn't matter how high you come up because you don't want to feel any pinching in your low back, but it's that pull yourself forward, lift up, and keep that chin gently tucked. Good. Take one more nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Great, and now we're gonna come all the way down and roll onto your right hand side. So just getting nice and comfortable on that side. Remember, the left hip's gonna stay rolled forward. Our head is nice and heavy. We're gonna take that left hand behind the back of our head, and it can be elbow to elbow. And on your next inhale, we're gonna lift the elbow, pull the shoulder blade down and back, spin that chest open. Exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, lift up and open. Exhale, bring it back down and compare your left side with your right side. Knees are staying pinched together. Sometimes that helps so our hips don't roll back. Good. Inhale, lift, open that chest up nice, breath in. Exhale, let it go. One more time, inhale, open, really pull that left shoulder blade down and back. And exhale, bring it all the way back down. Hands come back down and we're just gonna push ourselves, come all the way up to a comfortable seated position. And then we're gonna have the soles of our feet coming together. So you bring the soles of your feet together in front. This is cobbler's pose. And you might have this tendency to kinda wanna round down. Um, and that's okay. You can, if you have a wall in there, you can absolutely sit up against a wall as well. But what you're working on is trying to get your knees down towards the ground. So press the knees towards the ground. Maybe you grab the front of those feet and then you're lifting your chest, pulling yourself forward. So really trying to get out of this rounded position, but the elbows, the knees are going down. You can also use those elbows to kind of push or grab the front and just lift the chest. Exhale, sink those knees down. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. So the mobility in our hips are really important for healthy low backs. If our hips are tight and don't wanna move in certain directions, that can put some added stress on our low back. So making sure they're nice and mobile and moving around is really important for our backs. Good, we're gonna take one more breath in here. Exhale, let it go. And then you're gonna inhale, come all the way back up. And we're just gonna bring those feet out in front about a little wider than hip distance. And the hands are gonna come back behind you. 
And then from here, what you're gonna do is gently lower those knees from side to side. So they go over towards the right and just go as far as you feel comfortable. Maybe they tap, maybe they don't, but it's just trying to create a little movement and notice do both hips move evenly? Is one hip stuck in one direction compared to the other side? Just use the breath and keep pressing into your palms so you lift up through that chest. Good, just gently going side to side. Keep lifting through your chest. Great job, you guys. And you're noticing what you're feeling, how your body's moving. Really learning how your body wants to move and does move really helps us with all the activities that we like doing in our day-to-day -day routine. Good, one more time to the other side. Awesome. And then we're just gonna come up to a standing position. So come to the front of your mat. And just stand down, pressing into your feet, and we're gonna get grounded here. So you're pressing into those feet, and I, it's really important to get those feet muscles moving. So maybe you peek at your feet, and just see if you can lift your toes, and see if you can spread those toes. I promise you, the more you work at moving the feet, they will move if it seems like they don't want to right now. So lift the toes, spread those toes as much as you can, and then you're just gonna gently place them on the mat and see if they can stay spread. Then you wanna work your way up, gentle lifting of the thigh, squeezing. Make sure the hips are over your ankles, and sometimes we tend to stand with our weight shifted forward, more in the balls of our feet. But just see if you can get your hips over your ankles, equal weight pushing down into the feet. We're working our way up. So you're just lifting up through that belly. We're not holding and bracing. We're thinking of this lengthening up, like you're gonna grow a couple inches. I always hope I can grow a couple inches. <laughs> Keep pressing into your feet, lengthen up, and maybe the palms of your hands turn forward and those fingertips are reaching towards the ground. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. So we're standing in mountain, feeling nice and tall, nice and strong and grounded here. You're gonna float those arms, lift your arms all the way up overhead. Interlace your fingers and just flip the palms towards the ceiling. Reach those arms all the way up, nice big breath in. As much as you're reaching through the fingers, press your feet into the ground. Feel that core kick on. And then we're gonna gently bend to the right hand side. Let your right ear get nice and heavy. Stretch through those left fingertips. Press into your left foot. Inhale, come all the way back up. Head over towards that left hand side. Reach through your right fingertips. Nice big breath in. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, pull yourself. Come all the way back up. Bring those hands back down towards heart center. Pressing into your feet, we're gonna come into a crescent lunge. So we're gonna shift our weight onto our right foot, and you're gonna step your left foot about two or three feet behind that right. So pull your right hip back. It's all about getting our hips nice and squared. Drive the left heel to the ground. Press your right heel into the ground. As you press the right heel in, it's gonna fire up that glute. Our belly button lifts up and in. And then we're gonna sweep our arms all the way up overhead, coming into a crescent lunge. Using the breath, see if you're gripping anywhere, if you can relax your toes in the front. Exhale, let it go. Feeling nice and strong. You wanna feel a stretch in the front of that left hip. So keep pressing the left heel down, kind of tuck the hip underneath. Reach through those fingertips, good. You can stay right here if you'd like to add on. Take that right hand to the inside. Really listen to your body. Right hip back, left hip forward. And then gently take the left hand over towards the right hand side. Stretch through those fingertips. Maybe your right ear falls to your right shoulder and you're feeling this diagonal line from your fingertips to your heel. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, sweep, come all the way back up. Bring those hands down towards heart center. Back heel's gonna spin down. So we're gonna get 
our front heel in line with our back arch. Now, if you want, you can also work with that heel to heel alignment. It gives you a little bit wider stance. The front knee is gonna be bent and we're pressing that knee out towards our pinky toe. Pull that left rib cage back. We're pressing into our feet and those arms come out warrior two. So we're nice and soft in our shoulders. Keep pulling that left rib cage back, lengthening through the crown of your head and just peek at the front knee to make sure it didn't sneak in that you keep pushing it out towards that toe. And then from here, we're gonna come into a triangle pose. That's straightening your front thigh. The back leg stays where it is. Keep trying to square those hips off. And you want to imagine like you're in between two panes of glass trying to keep your body nice and straight. Your right hand is going to come to your right thigh. And your left hand can either stay at your hip or maybe you reach it up overhead. And what we're going to do is just gently slide down till your body feels like, oop, that's my stop. But make sure you're not hanging out on ligaments. So you want to squeeze your thighs, press your feet into the ground, and just turn your gaze to look at that right foot. Nice breath in, exhale, let it go. So the hand can be at your hip or up towards the ceiling. And really pull that left shoulder blade back and make sure you're breathing here. Nice breath in. Press into the feet, pull yourself, come all the way back up. We're gonna spin the right foot to face the side. And then we're just gonna gently fold forward so your hands can come to your thighs, slide all the way down. Your head gets heavy, so maybe your hands are on your thighs, your shins, maybe it's all the way forward. Maybe you grab hold of your elbows, just gently rocking from side to side, whatever feels comfortable for you. We're just trying to feel a nice stretch in the inner thighs and the back of our thighs. Keep pressing into those feet. Take one more nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Hands come to those hips, pull yourself, lift all the way back up. Spin those feet to face the right hand side. And we'll just take that left foot, step your left foot forward. I want you to come back to that mountain pose that we started with and just check in with everything. So you're starting at the feet. Spread the toes and what do you feel? Try and get your body in line over the feet, equal weight. We're lengthening up, reach through those fingertips. And just take a moment, notice what you're feeling. Good, now we're gonna switch to the other side. So we're gonna press into the left foot. As you're pressing into the foot, squeeze your glute by pressing into the heel. Belly button lifts up and in. We're gonna step back to a crescent lunge. So we're taking our right foot and step it about two or three feet behind. And you wanna make sure the hips are lining up. So we pull the left hip back, right hip forward. And with the knee, if you feel pressure in your knee, Try not to think of it as you're lunging forward, but you're pushing the foot into the ground so you've got the stability from your thigh and your glute. Press the back heel down, inhale, sweep those arms, lift all the way up overhead. Nice big breath in, exhale, let it go. Really soft on the toes, spread the toes. Nice big breath in, and you're feeling nice and strong in this pose. You want to feel a stretch in the front of the right hip, so maybe you get a little tuck of that tailbone underneath. You can stay right here, or maybe your left hand comes to the inside of the left thigh, and maybe that right arm reaches over, but you're really pressing into the feet to feel that foundation nice and strong. Inhale, sweep those arms back up. Hands come towards heart center. So we're gonna take our back foot and to spin that back foot down. So we come to either heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. Our front knee is bent and we're trying to have this outer rotation spiral of the front thigh pushing out towards your pinky toe. So you can almost imagine if my hand was on the outside of your knee and you're just trying to push out into my hand. Right rib cage pulls back, press down through that right foot, float those arms out towards the side. Nice breath in, warrior two, feeling nice and strong here. 
just keep pressing into those feet. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. And then we're going to come into triangle pose where we're going to take the front leg, straighten out through that front thigh, pull your right rib cage back. We're pressing into both of the feet. Right hand can come to your hip or that right arm reaches up overhead, left hand on your left thigh, and imagine like you're in between those two pieces of glass and we're just gonna slide the left hand down until you're like, yep, that's where I stop. <laughs> Keep reaching the right arm up towards the ceiling and pull the shoulder blade down and back. Turn your gaze to your left foot, nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Belly button lifting up and in, nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Press into those feet, lift, come all the way back up. Hands come in towards heart center. We're gonna spin that right foot forward and step your right foot forward. Press into those feet. I want you to take a nice big breath in, lift those arms, come all the way up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands down towards heart center as you sweep forward, forward fold. Now you can have a pretty good bend in those knees. Head gets nice and heavy. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. And from here, we're gonna really bend the knees, just step back, come into tabletop. So our hands are beneath our shoulders and knees beneath your hips. Press the tops of the feet into the ground and we're just going to do a cat and cow. So you're going to press into those palms, pull your chin in towards your chest, tuck that tailbone underneath. And then inhale, lift the tailbone. The arms stay straight and strong as you sink your chest, lift that head up. Exhale, round it out, press into the palms, pull your chin in towards your chest. Inhale, lift, gaze at that ceiling. Good, one more time, round it out, press into those palms, tuck that tailbone underneath, and then sink those hips back. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Arms can be straight out in front or down by your side. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. And from here, we're just gonna make our way down onto our backs. And you're just checking in again with everything, noticing left side, right side. Maybe the knees are bent or out straight, whatever feels comfortable on your body. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. And we're just getting ready for Shavasana. Bring your attention back towards your breath. Nice breath in, exhale, let it go. Do a little breathing exercise that we're gonna inhale for three, exhale for three, three rounds of it. Really focus on breathing into that belly. So on your next inhale, you have three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Nice breath in through your stomach. Exhale, letting it go, getting nice and heavy. Another nice breath in. Exhale, really let it all go. And you're just focusing on that inhale and your exhale. Noticing the differences between the two. Keeping your attention on your breath. Keeping your attention on how your body's moving. How it's feeling from when we first started to now. Those subtle little differences. Attention maybe in your neck has melted away or that back is gone. 
Each exhale, your body gets heavier into the mat. You're noticing less pressure in between the shoulder blades and maybe the front of the chest is open a little bit more. Nice breath in, exhale, let it go. And just gently creating a little bit of movement. Maybe you wiggle those fingers and your toes. Slowly sliding one foot in and then the next. We're going to come onto our sides and just carefully pressing yourself up to a comfortable seated position. And we're going to take a nice, big, deep cleansing breath in. Lift those arms, come all the way up overhead. Exhale, bring those hands down towards heart center. And just thinking your bodies for your practice today. Really tuning into how your body moved throughout the practice, what you felt, and carrying that with you off of your mat. Carrying the breath that we practice with you off of your mat. If you enjoyed today's class, hit that subscribe button or the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any new things coming out. If you know anybody just starting out on their yoga journey or maybe they have different aches and pains and stiffness, feel free to share with them. You'll wanna make sure you check out that link below so that you can get my six moves to help get rid of aches and pains and any stiffness that you've got going on. And please leave comments down below. What was your favorite move that you learned from today's class? And let me know if there's things that you wanna learn about. So until next time, I'll catch you later. Namaste.